the airmen of the 172nd Fighter Wing celebrated the arrival of the first two F-16 Vipers yesterday, marking the second iteration of F-16s for our wing. The Blackies are proud of our time-honored tradition of fighters in the fort, first operating the F-16 fighters out of Fort Wayne from 1991 to 2010. In 69 historical years of fighters in the fort, the 122nd has flown seven different primary aircraft under the state flag of Indiana. Previously, the 122nd Fighter Group out of Stockfield, Indianapolis, performed moving to our home here at Bearfield. We would later become known as the 122nd Fighter Group. We now have the absolute honor and privilege of flying one of the Air Force's most proven multi-role fighter jets, the F-16 Piper. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to introduce the Assistant Adjutant General and Commander of the Air National Guard of the great state of Indiana, Brigadier General Michael Stoller.
teams from all around the world, ones and twos, we're going to build squad, we're going to get tough because the Black Snakes are awesome. And that's the sum of it. They know that at National, they, they respect you, they respect how you do your work, your mid Midwest work ethic, and the supporting community. So they wanted to take care of us. So 2040, two years into the, not even two years into the conversion, they came back and said, the Air Force is going to get rid of all A-10s. We're going to give you these gloves, which is a little keen air. Uh, important mission at the time, reconnaissance and surveillance, but not an enduring mission. And it would have wiped half of the half of the men and women standing and they wouldn't have had a job. It would have wiped half of our force off of this, this space. It probably set us up for, for closure down the road. So here we started fighting that, so that's not that's not appropriate. Uh, got our congressional folks behind us and uh, and turned that around and, and became a premier A-10 unit as we as we moved forward. Got into about 2015, a few deployments under our belts and uh, we had an officer out working at the Bar Bureau and he said, hey, my current is going to to come out here. So we've been working getting airplanes back here since about 2015. And if you remember in the late 2015, 17, 18, up to the point, is, uh, we were trying to ask the transition back from A-10. Uh, at the same time, save the A-10 momentum was gone. Senator, uh, Senator out of Arizona was important and key to that and uh, kept the A-10 around, Senator McCain, and uh, that also was the way our transition back. So it wasn't until recently we were able to reflect back to 2017, where we had Senator uh, Donnelly, I think, put in our NDAA a language in there so we could convert. So we were able to go back with that and help our current code else, everyone who's serving in the office today, and we were able to, to vector back to this airplane, and eventually, Build a coalition of states that had A-10s, and we all agreed upon Fort Wayne could reduce their airplanes. We could, we could reduce 21 to 22 airplanes in the Air Force, and we could get our airplanes from, from Holloman, uh, where we're going to get them today. So it's, it's pretty amazing as you look at that, how that happens, and, and how it forms an officer, a general officer today, to say that's not going to happen again. And that's what we've been working on for the last five to six years. And I told the, the Adjutant General, Adjutant General Lyles, I said, as soon as the first F-16 lands, we will start working on the F-35. And that's what we're going to do. So when I walk out here, my whole mission now is to get F-35 here for longevity purposes. We've already started last year working on modernization of the base. We don't know what that's going to look like yet, but we're, we're working with our, with our representatives to try to get that figured out. And uh, I think we're gaining momentum on that to make sure this base is, is viable and ready to do the nation's call or to be the governor's call at any, at any time. This airplane's going to help you get there. You, you know that. you got a, you got a thousand airmen that are ready to rock and roll and touch this thing and get it flying. Doesn't matter what you do on this base. If you're a supply, if you're fuels, if you're, if you're making food for the airmen, if you're protecting them, washing over the iron, twisting wrenches on this thing, flying it, every single one of you on this base is going to make that airplane fly. So don't, don't forget that. And for our congressional folks and our, and our team players in our community, God bless you. Because I'll tell you what, you, you're the real reason that we're here. We, we, cannot, we cannot get and protect and get the right things from the Air Force without a voice. And uh, most of the time, that voice comes from our civilian leaders. So God bless you for that. And the last thing I want to say is, Rebecca, where are you at? Damn, man, that was an awesome national anthem. My head came pumped, so I almost started crying. I appreciate that so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, General Stoller. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to our 122nd Fighter Wing Commander, Colonel Joshua Wagner. So thank you, sir. 
Um, to our community partners, community leaders, uh, honorary commanders, and our uh, elected officials, thank you as well. Uh, we couldn't do it without uh, the support and the enduring support. Uh, we come go. Trill still was here longer than most. Uh, I'm out of here in a couple of years. Some of uh, so will be here, like, there are guys that will be around. Uh, people could be here if you want to find right now. But uh, there are people here that will represent the weight in the community, but our time is short and we couldn't do it without you. We know that you're going to be here, we can depend on you, and we know that uh, you have our best interest at heart at all times. So, thank you. Keep fighting a good fight and taking care of men and women uh, that are going to come up the ranks. I, I talked to a kid from AOP uh, that's very complicated for He's the guy that's going to take care of our stuff. And it is his first drill. So, my first drill was yeah, 27 years ago. Your first drill was probably a few more than that. Uh, <laughs> but this, this, this base will be here. We'll be doing the job. And these guys like that kid are going to be here long after we're gone and forgotten. So, you'll all be here supporting his career just as long as he did mine. So, thank you for that. Um, and thanks to Aaron for what said. So, we wouldn't have gotten these uh, aircraft regardless of the influence of the community. Um, the pull that we have on the air staff, uh, the visibility we generated over the years without you doing the job. So, if you put planes in in somebody's backyard, it would look bad and may not have happened. If we had one arrest downtown, uh, it would reflect the poorly on the community and the wing, and, and we wouldn't have these airplanes. So, you guys are the reason we have these, and, and you're the reason that I'm Mr. Bullock, and I have known that in spite of the conversion and all the challenges, that's how we be successful. So, thanks to you. A um, couple other quick things. Someone you can't tell how to say it. So, this is awesome. It's really good. Um, I just completed the senior officer course. So, after I played this for nine years, then we dominated the A 10 for 13 years, and now I'm stepping back into this airplane after a little bit of a hiatus. And I'm excited to do it. It is a uh, crowd pleaser, and um, it is a people pleaser. I say we're going to do it. Uh, and, and I would like to make that excitement to you. And you should be excited about doing this too. It's something different, it's going to be a challenge, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, with new jet, we get new missions, and we secure our future for us for a period of time. But just like General Stoller said, we're not going to settle for that. We're going to keep pushing for what's next after this. Um, this ensures a mission for now, um, but I want that kid that was in AFU this morning to, uh, to, to finish 20 years from now with Jets on the right. So we want to, to keep Jets in perpetuity. We will have fighters report for as long as we can, and um, I think we have the right people in the room to make that happen. And, and the other thing is, this gets back on fight. I don't know about you, but I feel for my wife, she's not here, she, I like the report. Um, we're doing God's work, we're doing the mission. We're going out there and we're accepting the challenge and, and we uh, dominate and we're given that opportunity. And, and this will get us back into that fight. Uh, we don't have to worry about um, not knowing the future or finding another place where you can serve. You can serve right here, um, knowing that your efforts are going to go towards putting those jets in the air um, to fight the American wars. So um, this, this gives us the huge to fight. I'm more excited about that. And the last thing I want to say is you're ready. You are. You may not know it, uh, but you're ready for this. Um, I guess I would have to stop that course. Um, and for the record, I am twice as old now as I was the first time I went to an FCC training course. So, like, I doubled my age. Um, and when I walked out the door, I thought, man, this is going to be hard on the dude whose neck is already jacked up and has sciatica. But, no big deal. I was ready. Uh, it took me a couple looks, but I got, I got in that jet. I knew what to do with it. And, and after a little bit of effort, a whole lot of work, um, I was able to successfully employ it. And if you don't think you can uh, set this challenge, you're wrong. You can. You're ready. And if you're not ready, we'll get you ready. Because we have to have you ready uh, to do the mission. Um, you're going to learn how to fly it. You're going to learn how to fight with it. You're going to learn how to fix it. You're going to learn how to maintain and sustain it. You're going to learn how to take care of each other as you build uh, and develop those skills to be a successful wing. And I have full faith in you. I know these guys do too. Um, last is you don't have any choice. You have to be ready. Um, the world is a dangerous place, and it's really just becoming more so. Uh, we might be called upon uh, uh, in support uh, missions sooner rather than later. Uh, we expect that there are people that are going to go down range within the next year. These jets, we will have eight jets, so the right number of pilots and the right number of maintainers to send these jets somewhere else 
in April 2026. Mark my word. That's the mandate. We're going to have EF3 and we're going to have the right people to find and the right people to maintain. So you have to get ready and you have to get your job done so you can meet that mission. Um, there's a lot to do. Just look around. That is an old, beat up, dirty, smelly, awesome jet. Uh, and we're going to get 21 of those, and we're going to cold play them, and we're going to make a garbage, and we're going to send them off the board. It's going to take every one of you people to do that. So, get ready, it's going to happen. Again, thank you to everyone. Up front, thank you for the press for covering this. Hope you can build relationships in the community, and you can do that for us. Thank you very much. Thanks for being on the stage, and uh, back to you. Thanks. Thank you, Colonel Wagner. We thank you all for celebrating with us and witnessing this historical event as we usher a new chapter of fighter deaths into the future for the 122nd fighter wing. We're going to go play them and we're going to make them our way and we're going to send them off the board.